Boom. Oh, man. Makeshift machinery, ridiculous run-ins, and lots and lots of zombie slayings? What? Today, we're headed back to the gore-drenched streets of LA, breaking down and reacting to all of the intense medical scenes and twisted injuries from Dead Island 2. Let's dive right in. Whoa. Holy cow. I see organs. Different injuries could actually cause somebody's body to be severed in half, namely car accidents or falls from really high levels or industrial equipment type injuries. Oh, okay. If I got blunt trauma to the side of my head like that, just behind your ear, which is your mastoid process, you could potentially have a fracture there. You can potentially get internal bleeding in your brain, but you're gonna be totally dazed and confused. Oh, another smack to the head. It looks like fracture to the nose. You see some blood. You can actually fracture the sinuses here. People will have fractures from getting punched in the face on either side. And I tell everybody, I'm like, please do not sneeze. If you sneeze, sneeze with your mouth open because if you try to stifle the sneeze, air will escape through the sinus into the tissue. Boom. Oh, man. Puncture wound right underneath the jaw here. So very soft, you guys can feel your own. But then that puncture has to go through the hard palate of your mouth, which is bone, bone, up into your skull. So lots of different bones, has to have a lot of force, has to be sharp enough to be able to do that. And if it gets into the brain, that's your frontal lobe. And that has to do with personality, different things relating to higher level function. Oh, leg gone. Wow. Shot right through the femur. Femur is huge, big. If you break that bone, there's a ton of blood loss that could happen. Extremely painful. We see people mostly get bad fractures, and all of a sudden, as it fractures, it retracts. Retract! And it rides over itself, and it's extremely painful. Is that a nail gun? That looks like a nail gun. It sounds like a nail gun. I've seen people come to the emergency department where they actually have nail gun injuries where the nail goes into bone, into tissue. I've seen it through fingers, knees. And what ends up happening is we just pull them out. And usually because it's involving bone, we will give antibiotics. Oh man. It looks like we can actually see pieces of the femur bone, super sharp. We have to be really careful as healthcare providers that we actually don't lacerate ourselves because these bones are actually quite sharp. Oh, what is that? A meat cleaver right to the face. In the face. It could potentially go through the bone. Obviously the soft tissue, it's got a lot of weight behind it. Small knives, when people try to stab somebody in the head, it doesn't necessarily go through, it bounces right off. There's not enough force to it. This, there's a lot of force, there's a lot of weight to it. So it has, unfortunately, more damage. Oh, laceration to the chest. Hopefully you have a lot of muscle there. You know, work on your bench presses. Then you have your rib cage protecting. Unlikely that a laceration across the chest will go any deeper than the rib cage. Usually it does not. Was not expecting that. I did not see that coming. Puncture wound straight to the face. You can have something called a Lafort fracture and there's different levels of it just depending on which bones are actually broken or how many pieces it is in and it needs to have surgery done to replace it and fix it. You can bleed out pretty intensely with a posterior bleeding in the nose. People come in with nosebleeds. You have bleeding either the front at Kesselbeck's plexus or you have bleeding in the back which is sphenopalatine artery. Oh, just massive blunt trauma to the head. Can actually cause cervical neck fractures besides the area that's actually getting hit, the compression that can go back. We see that a lot with car accidents where people have force that takes them back and you have a lot of injuries to the cervical spine. <laughs> Come on. Come on. So a knife, big knife through the skull and then it starts bleeding out like a faucet. It doesn't do that. It will just bleed. It won't profusely come out like a fountain. It'll ooze. Oh, look at this. Is this like Wolverine? Years ago, I was Wolverine for Halloween. I had claws minus the electrical component. What? If you have six knives going into your face with that much force and electricity, I don't know if you got a chance or not. Most of the electrical injuries that I see that come to the emergency department are related to like outlets, not these crazy weapons that have been made to kill zombies. Oh, wow. 
In that situation where the leg is taken off, tourniquet the leg, grab the other piece of the you know, the lower portion as well. Maybe put it in a bag and bring it with you. I've had people come to the hospital where they actually forget to bring the amputated piece and without the piece, can't put it back together. <laughs> come on! Come on! An ax could cause significant head trauma to somebody because it has a long fulcrum and a blade that is sharp enough that it can pop right through. Just think about a big, strong piece of wood. Same idea. The skull is millimeters thick. It's hard as a rock, obviously, but with enough force, you can crack right through it. Whoa. We see people who come to the emergency department a lot with head injuries, blunt trauma due to getting in fights. It actually causes both people, the person getting hit as well as the person doing the hitting, significant trauma. So we see a lot of bloody hands, we see broken hands, and then we see a lot of soft tissue injury to the face. You also have to think if you're punching somebody in the mouth, you can lacerate and cut your hand. And if you lacerate and open up into like the knuckles into the joint, then you increase the risk of getting bacteria into a joint, which is horrible and bad and dangerous. Some blunt trauma, either right to the jaw, right to the neck. Sometimes you can hit somebody so hard, obviously, that it breaks the bone. In the neck, you actually have a hyoid bone that sits right up in here, but then you have your cartilage. Sometimes you can break cartilage, but it's pretty hard to do that. You can cause inflammation within your airway. You can also cause spasming of your vocal cord. You break bones in the jaw. We typically see not just a single fracture, but we'll actually see two fractures where the energy goes in and the energy goes out. <gasps> laceration injury right through the knees. If you actually hit the patella tendon, which is basically the tendon attaching your kneecap to the tibia, if that gets disrupted, it actually causes the kneecap to go higher up into the thigh. And pretty much that's how your thigh muscles are attached to the lower leg to allow it to say kick somebody or to extend. And if it's not attached by the patella tendon, you're not gonna be doing that. Even if somebody is kind of electrocuted with the energies that we use normally, typically bodies don't explode. Now, obviously not 100%. There could be so much energy that something causes somebody to explode. Explode! But a handheld device, I don't normally see that happen. We see people that come with lower level energy electrical injuries. What the heck did I just watch? If you wanted me to do more, you have other clips that you need me to check out, please let me know in the comments. And definitely, if you enjoyed this, just like you enjoyed all the other videos that you've seen on my channel, check out this playlist right here, binge watch everything, and make sure that you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching, and stay healthy, my friends.